I always knew I wanted to be an attorney. I just like helping people. Are you okay? Do you need any help? Thanks, Christopher. I've been in Vegas helping the little guys since I was a little guy. Are we any good at helping you win? No, we're great. Call us now for help with your injury case. I'm David Kohlmeyer, the founder of the Las Vegas Legal Network. The reason why I started the Legal Network is that I noticed that consumers were looking for lawyers and they didn't know what to look for, who to call, where to go. My goal was to create the legal network in Las Vegas to help people find the right lawyer to help them depending upon their legal case. I'm not an attorney. This is a lawyer referral network that is helping people get the right lawyer when they need it the most. We offer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where we have lawyers in the network ready and available to help people whatever their situation or whatever their problem is. Whether they got arrested, an accident, injured, family law cases, whatever legal matter, the Las Vegas Legal Network is here to help people in Clark County. And the other person can have, let's say, a red mark or a scratch. Today, we have a special guest, Chris Helmick with Pacific West Injury Law, my co-host, Beja Rivera, today, talking about all these car accidents that are happening in Las Vegas. A lot of people are dying in general. So I wanted to bring um, a special person who does personal injury all day long, helping people in the community. So let's just talk about this topic in general. Chris, what are your thoughts? I mean, right now, I feel like every day I'm going to get a pop-up on my iPhone notification that there's a car accident, someone just died. I think two people, you know... I think it was yesterday that they died in a car accident. It just seems yeah. there's a, it's a lot more like I would say violent. You know, it's not like there's a lot more death that's taking place. You have these you know raiders driving around, whether it's DUI, and it just seems like a lot of people are dying. I'm actually critical. a little bit nervous with my kids in the car yeah. in general. Chris, what's your thoughts in regards to that? I don't. I mean, it, it's definitely getting worse out there for sure. You can see in the, with all these news articles or anything popping up, where people are in much more severe accidents than than what we've been seeing uh, lately. So it's uh, it's definitely a problem. I think it's just, I mean, it comes down. I think people just aren't caring, you know, when they're driving and running through red lights or, or just Not driving sharing recklessly the road. or whatever it is that they're doing. But, um, or more, you know, more drivers out there, population's growing. So it just, it's, it's bound to happen, it seems like. Do you think now with the marijuana laws that have, that have you know, passed, people allowed to smoke and I guess normally we would say it's alcohol. People could take Uber and Lyft home. Like you would think that with ride share now that it's cheaper yeah. in general, go home. But do you thoughts, have you seen more cases where it's more, you know, marijuana related because you have all these dispensaries in town? Um, you see those, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, in my field, I, I, I see people that have been hit, you know, my clients with, and they're arrested for DUI. But a lot of times they don't, I don't really get the details about uh, what their, what it was, alcohol or, or marijuana, but I definitely see a lot of it. It just says impairment on there. I don't really go into the details too much. But that's them not being at fault. Yeah. Or, but so the, uh, for my but, clients. They, because my clients. automatically, don't you, as soon as they find that detail out, you're at fault, right? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, if they still, uh, you know, if, if you're a person that was drinking and driving and you're rear-ended by somebody you're, you're de and you're stopped at a stoplight, you're definitely not at fault, but you can still get arrested for, for drinking and driving. You know, they, they, they caught you. But um, in that scenario, you're still not at fault for the crash. So the bottom line is, you know, if it's normally when someone gets arrested for a DUI, they could take the blood, and we don't know for maybe six or eight months yeah. that if they have marijuana or, you know, any type or of alcohol. controlled substance or alcohol in their blood until the results come back. It takes a while, but no matter what they're seeing you when they get into an accident, they're yeah. injured, they're already treating, right, in yeah. regards to if, they're, if they've been injured. So yeah. you don't really focus on No, I mean, I, it's definitely a big part of the case when I, for, when I talk to the insurance companies and things like that. You know, we stress that part that, hey, this, you know, your insured here is arrested for DUI and then, you know, that's going to come up if this case goes to trial and, and they know that and the value of a case changes significantly. I think when, when there's that, uh, that fact of a case. Factor. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I get into a car accident and the person gets arrested for DUI, does that 
I'm injured. Does that help the case for you? It's easier uh, for you to actually like win my case. Well, yeah. I mean, it's definitely easier. Um, but the the part that becomes a little bit more difficult is making sure that your or my client or your um, at the time is is getting properly compensated. So uh, with that DUI factor, you, you know, you don't want some some lawyer that's going to come in and just take whatever that they offer. You want to make sure that you're getting you're going all the way and getting fully compensated with you know the fact that. That other defendant, that defendant was arrested for DUI, so the case value changes. Make sure you're you're getting fully compensated for that part. Covering all grounds. That yeah. sounds good to me. Beja, what are your thoughts in regards to like when people go out? If you, I know that you go to a lot of like networking events and so on. Do you feel that people are more responsible these days, or they're taking ride short, or what do you think that people are doing? Because I just think, I, I actually, I don't really fully know, but I think that with more of the dispensaries. Especially now with COVID, everyone was kind of hidden for like two years. Now people are back out. You know, you see a lot of places like clubs and bars. It's like really full. I mean, people are making up for lost time that basically they it's were stuck in their home. It's recreational now. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like uh, here in Vegas, well, I've been here for four and a half years now. Um, everybody's like a social drinker. Yeah. So like all these events and everything that you go out to, it's literally i would say like 90 percent of the time people aren't taking ubers know, and right. doing that you know and it's available too i think it and the, compared to what was, was before where there was no uber i mean now you have the access to call an uber it's not crazy expensive and and you can avoid getting the, the dui so but people still don't do it so obviously you yeah. know that's still and when i got my foot into the legal field at what 20 um first thing you know was joey gilbert he was you know criminal defense his first thing was Getting an Uber or a Lyft or a taxi, whatever, is way cheaper than a DUI. Oh, yeah. And so that's always, like, just stuck in my mind. And yeah. I just want more people to to know that and understand that it is way cheaper. So, oh, yes, yeah. spend spend the extra $20 or yeah. whatever it is because it's going to be definitely at the end. Cheaper. You know, I was just thinking about it in general. You know how there are some programs that most people don't know about it, that if you are intoxicated, you can call a number or a service and they'll – pick you up and they also have another driver that will come and pick up your car yeah. and drive your car home because I think most people you sell yourself of like look I think I could drive I only had one drink I'm fine but they're afraid to leave their car there then they're going to have to drive back it's going to cost them money so they think like I, I, can, I can make it yeah. home but I was just thinking that Uber really should have Uber and Lyft should have yeah. a feature yeah. you know that basically you press the button that like you comes with another driver yeah. And it drives your car home because most people don't know these numbers for whatever nonprofit that's out. Could you know. provide that, please? I don't even know Problem those. solver. I don't, I don't know the number. I gotta look it up in general, but I know like I've heard of services, but it really should be part of Uber and Lyft that they're like two people yeah. that come in a car and you take your car home. So I actually think yeah. I was just thinking about that in general because people just don't know these different random numbers. And when you're drunk and you're intoxicated, you think I'm like, what's that number that yeah. it's gonna take me home with my car? Or even yeah. having the concern of like having your car towed or you know yeah. just like it's not safe where it's at. I think that's There's a lot of factors that come into it. I think it's a really good point in general to have that extra service. I think people would use that more. Like if it just showed up, it's kind of like on yeah. the template. Like, mm -hmm. like get a ride home and bring your car home. Yeah, right. I'm and then sure people would use that. And even if it was like twenty five dollars more money, it's worth doing it because at least your car is home, especially if it's a yeah. Sunday night and then you got to go to work on Monday. I just yeah. love the way Dave thinks. Yeah, I'm trying to come. You got some business idea. I, he, no, always. <laughs> I'm trying. To, Every you know, time you come on the problem solver, yeah. it's always something. He always provides something. Yeah. The goal is to come up with you know solutions to these problems. Correct. That's why it's good to have a conversation because you start thinking about yeah. it a little bit in general. And and what my goal is, like something like this little bit of video that we have today. That's you know three hundred thousand people going to see it on Cox. And and my goal is to make a difference to make some change. But you know maybe we'll take the video, send it to Uber and Lyft, and kind of our discussion. Say, okay. hey, this is a great idea in general. Yeah. You know to help people. And the truth is, we're, we could prevent major. You know major. All I mean, this, even this, death, fatalities, all of that. I mean, I mean, we really can make a difference if we right. can just, you know, share some ideas and suggestions in general. Correct. Yeah. When we come back in a minute, um, we're going to have some quick commercial break. But when we come back in a minute, I want to talk about other solutions that we can think of in general that we could, you know, share with either people, um, some ideas that they need to do to prevent getting into car accidents um, and getting hurt or even dying. And then maybe um, some other, you know, creative ideas in general that we can just do something to help in general, come up with some solutions because a lot of people are not coming up with solutions. So we'll be back in a quick minute. All right. Stand out from the noise. Podcasting is one of the great wonders to start creating content for your brand. 
At Sticky Paw Studios, you have a professional studio with audio and video podcasting capabilities to hit every angle of your market. We have in-house editors who are ready to create micro pieces of content from your podcast to post on social media as well. You come in, sit down, and we handle the tech. It's that simple. Visit our website or DM us on Instagram at Sticky Paws Studios. See you soon. <clears throat> that was weird. It happens all the time. I always knew I wanted to be an attorney. I just like helping people. Are you okay? Do you need any help? Thanks, Christopher. I've been in Vegas helping the little guy since I was a little guy. Are we any good at helping you win? No. We're great. Call us now for help with your injury case. Okay, we are back here with Chris Hummick, Pacific West Injury Law, Beja Rivera, talking about all these car accidents that are taking place, people getting injured in general. Chris, what are your thoughts in regards to all these hit and runs in general that are taking place, people taking off, getting an accident, people get injured, and the car just takes off in general? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a problem in Vegas. It happens all the time. Um, there's a lot of people that if maybe they don't have insurance, maybe they just, you know, maybe they're intoxicated, who knows what's going on, and they just try to run from the scene to get away from it. So um, it's becoming more of a problem, it seems like, but there's there's ways to to help uh, people that this type of thing happens to you. I mean, I'm uh, the uh, my firm, Pacific West Injury Law, we, we have access to um, cameras, cameras that are on, on top of the, uh, the lights at the intersections. Um, we have investigators that go out, they can go out and find other, if there's other cameras in the area, 7-Eleven, something like that. Um, that, that can help in these situations to try to figure out, all right, was this person that hit me and ran? Can we get a you know, license plate off the, the uh, car or something like that from these videos? Um, any type of information like that is, is definitely helpful, helpful. It seems so difficult. When I was a police officer on the street in Henderson, I know there was a hit and run. There was no real footage. Most police officers, they won't take that much time in general because they got to go yeah. to the next call for service. So if there's information or, or independent witness nearby, that's one thing. But otherwise, yeah. it really just kind of stops unless... It's a fatality. Then they'll yep. they'll go to basically um, accident investigation unit, and then they'll yep. do a little bit more. They'll go out. Yeah. But it just seems I feel so bad because if there's a hit and run and there's no insurance or someone takes off, if you don't have and can, maybe you could explain that in regards to having the extra optional insurance. Most people just don't know about that. Yeah. How does the extra insurance explain the extra insurance? People just don't know. And people yeah. need to listen to this very carefully. Yeah. So some I mean insurance companies should offer it to you. Some don't. But uh, I mean to be to know about it and know that it's out there and available is is a huge thing. So if you're getting hit by if you get hit by somebody and they run, there's and there's you're not going to find any insurance uh, on this person. You you have if you have this extra coverage on your own insurance, it's called uninsured motorist coverage. If you have that, then you're okay. You know it's for situations like that. So you can get your medical bills paid for. You get pain and suffering. Same it'd be like the same situation if somebody hit you that had insurance. That extra coverage is called uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. All you got to do is you pay. It's actually pretty, pretty uh, reasonable too. You pay a little bit of extra money on your insurance um, policy, and and then you have it. And they can add it right on there. It's worth it. Why do you think people don't know about it? And I will share a story. But what's your thoughts? Why do you think people are not educated about it? I, I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't know if agents are are selling it in, uh, enough, or or people aren't uh, figuring out exactly, or the agents aren't if, informing them what it really is and how it could benefit them. But it's it's really not much. Uh, more on on your policy. I mean, the, in the grand scheme of things, maybe that's why I don't, I don't know. Maybe the agents don't make much money on it. Don't really care about it that much. I will share a story which is kind of interesting. When I met with when I first came out of here, you know, what I, you have to become educated about your insurance, whatever insurance you have. I think most people just think like what they pay. Like, yeah. oh, I pay eighty six thousand a month. I pay yeah. one twenty. I'll get with my insurance. Like the problem is you have to compare apples to apples yeah. in regards to insurance. You have to get with an insurance agent. And I think that you may, is it something that you provide where you can look over someone's insurance policy to see what insurance they have, even if they haven't gotten to an accident? Is that something that you could provide as yeah. a service? Yeah, I mean, definitely. If anybody, if they have uh, questions about their insurance, I can help out with that. That's not that's not a problem at all. And just kind of explain what kind of coverage they have and what, what they can do to help and, and stuff like that. Because it's what happens... like knowledge is power. And, yeah. No, absolutely. You know, the less you know, the better in, in this day yeah. and time, right? And you're better off knowing this stuff before you get into an accident. God, if you're not going to wait that you don't get into an accident. But if you do, yeah. you want to make sure that you have proper insurance and you need to be educated about what you have. But yeah. I'll share a story. When I came out here, the insurance agent said, look, I want to compare policies. And he says to me, um, do, you, do you have your own medical insurance? And I said, I do. I currently work. I'm a police officer. He said, well, do you really need something called MedPay? And I'm like, what's MedPay? Yeah. And then mm. he kind of said, it's just optional insurance you have. But if you already mm. have insurance, we could take away MedPay. And you don't need it, and we'll save you fifty dollars a month. So I said, "Great, I'm saving this money." Yeah. But meanwhile, what I really didn't realize is I'm losing a benefit that I could use if I get into an accident. Whether you have health insurance or not, 
Do you believe that something like MedPay, an additional policy? Can you explain med- MedPay a little bit? MedPay, it's, it's okay. I mean, underinsured or uninsured motorist coverage is definitely much, uh, much better to have. Uh, if you do without the MedPay, it's not a big deal. Like you said, uh, with the health insurance, if you have that, then that can still pay for your medical bills. But um, MedPay is a little tricky sometimes, too. If you have health insurance, then they try to. Uh, health insurance has, a, has to pay first, and then MedPay will come in after and kick in. There's little, weird little things in your contract. It's like your secondary in insurance yeah. or something. So it's MedPay's okay, I think. It, I mean, it's it's definitely um, extra money for you, but uh, the, the key thing is that uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. And when it, what I notice is when I speak to different people, a lot of times when I ask them if they have optional insurance, yeah. they, if they don't have, like most people just don't have, if they have the underinsured motorist, like they don't have anything. They don't have the MedPay, they don't have anything. Yeah. Like, so it's either you have it all or you have zero. And most people these days, because they just want, you know, uh, the cheapest insurance, they just get the bare minimum. Correct. Yeah in general and the truth is i don't think they think about their family in the future and, and i think it's just a lot of people uneducated yeah. and also um, i'm kind of concerned with people i think 30 percent of the community is hispanic and maybe with translation they don't understand maybe their insurance agents are just trying to get them the cheapest rate yeah but th- if they don't have health insurance they may really need these extra optional insurance policies yeah especially with the increase in car accidents and people getting yeah. injured in, in town in vegas I just feel and, like they sell the wrong things and, honestly and the people driving around with no insurance i mean it, it's it's pretty sad when they when a client comes in and, and and tells me you know how injured they are and shows me I mean these people you know somebody comes in on crutches and I, and I feel really bad for them and then they I have to tell them the news they have that the person that hit them has no insurance and I have to explain to them what uninsured motorist coverage is and then they don't have it and, and they had they, no and idea I, when yeah. that should have already been and explained to, to them yeah and I have to tell them I, I, I can't help you here there's nothing I can there do there should be something like that because I mean how do people get justice in general you get into an accident injury you lose a leg or something yeah. And the person has no insurance, or yeah. you get the insurance card. It looks like it's good for that? six months, but you lose it. Yeah, you know there should be some type of like state law that if someone, I mean something. Yeah, I think that if you don't have insurance and you get a ticket, I think it's about a thousand dollar ticket. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but I just think more, especially if it's an accident where someone's losing a body part. Yeah. I just think that I mean basically I think it's just a thousand dollar ticket for no insurance. Yeah. Well, you have to have a SR twenty two after that, right? Well, yeah, if you get convicted of driving with no insurance and they make you carry an SR-22 mm-hmm. for three years. For years, yeah, yes. For three, I think it's three years. And you can't like, even lapse on that. Yeah, it's, a, It'll it's start basically over. a penalty because you got caught driving no, with no insurance. Mm-hmm. But the problem with it is if I lose my leg, yep. I get a $1,000 ticket yeah. the other side of it, and I'm still out of luck on my leg. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's a problem in regards to the injury, and I feel bad. I feel, I feel actually someone should actually get – if you lose a body part or you're yeah. severely injured, I think there should be more jail time. It shouldn't just be a misdemeanor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I mean I don't know if you want to say substantial bodily harm, the consequence or death. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know that, I, and I think even with the death with an accident, I think it's just a misdemeanor as well. But I just think there needs to be stricter laws in general, and we could talk about that in the next segment in general in regards to the laws in general because that may be the only way of preventing people from causing accidents or not having insurance. And one yeah. of the things that people do, as I'm not sure if you know, is that they'll buy insurance for like six months and they'll pay monthly. But yeah. after the first month, they lapse. But they have the paperwork insurance, yeah. basically say they have insurance. So if a police officer stops them, they show it to the insurance. So for criminal nature, right, they're not going to get a ticket because I showed proof of insurance. But it doesn't show that it's valid. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I think that when we come back, we should talk about some different ways of how do we prevent the death uh, from taking place from these car accidents or more things that maybe law enforcement can do or maybe more of a penalty. You know, Like I said, yeah. I feel so bad. Um, and I'm sure you've seen people yeah. that are really bad condition. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So we'll be back in a quick minute. We'll talk about how we're going to solve this problem in general in regards to, you know, preventing death from taking place, substantial bodily harm. And we're going to try to come up with some creative solutions. And again, we'll be back in a quick minute. Injured? Call 602 Hurt. Car accident? Call 602 Hurt. Pacific West Injury Law, a firm that focuses on you. Our firm is dedicated to you and your recovery. No fee until we win. Millions recovered. Here when you need us. Looking good and sounding good has never been more simple. At Sticky Pod Studios, we strive to make it as easy as possible to reach your audience. Our state-of-the-art podcasting facility enables you to come in, sit down, and speak to your audience. We handle the tech. It's that simple. Visit our website or DM us on Instagram at Sticky Pod Studios. We'll see you soon. This is David Colmeyer, The Problem Solver. We're back from our quick break. I'm here today again with Chris Helmick, Pacific West Injury Law. I'm Beja Rivera, my co-host, talking about the car accidents that are taking place, the injuries in Las Vegas and Clark County, and what we can do to prevent these things. We're just talking about some different topics and um, definitely a sensitive issue. Again, increase in 
injuries and what what can we do to prevent this stuff? So quick question, Chris. You know, in this state, we don't have the red light cameras. Yeah. Do you think that if we had the red light cameras where people were getting tickets, yeah. do you think it would prevent accidents from taking place? I do, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that run red lights. I mean, the cases that I've seen and handle over the years, there's okay. definitely a lot of people that, and I, you know, I asked them the details about, how, all right, how long are we sitting there? How, you know, how many seconds you wait till the light turn, uh, or after the light turned green to go? And people are, you know, run full on red lights all the time still. So um, it, it would definitely help. I so it would help. What are your thoughts with that? Red light cameras? Because people feel that it's actually an invasion of your privacy. You probably haven't heard this, but a lot of people say, oh, if I'm at a red light. You know, it's an invasion of privacy. You're filming me. You know, like a lot of people would say that because they don't want cameras out there. Don't they have that in California where like either, when you run a red light? Like yeah, there's different states like that have to, that. Yeah. In this no, state, they don't have it. It should be all around. Got it. So you think that it would prevent people from going through red lights? Correct. Yeah. You know, one of the things I, I did actually a news release as the problem solver was I told people that it's kind of a five second rule that if you're the first car by the red light by yeah. red light and it turns green, yeah, you should count five seconds before you go to yeah. that intersection. Would you I, agree with that? I hundred percent agree. So the funny it's thing like is you're breaking uh, time to see. So Leslie LaGuardia, she does uh, public relations for me, and I said to her originally, you make it a seven-second rule. Yeah. So she's like, Dave, you know, I'm at the light. It's seven seconds. Yeah, People are beeping, beeping yeah. their horn. Like, it can't be seven yeah. seconds. Like, all right, we're going to make it five. Yeah. But I said, only for the first car. And I said, who cares if someone behind you is beeping? You're going to save your life, your yeah. child's life, by waiting the extra seven seconds. So we kind of agreed on the five-second rule, which yeah. I basically, I would say try to that. If you're the first car out there, count five seconds. One. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> One Mississippi, and then go. two Mississippi. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I think that's the only way to prevent it. And you watch how many people do you see go through a light? Yeah, a lot. I mean, all the time. I think that's all I think that's time. super helpful. And obviously, when you when you go into the movie, going to the intersection, you can see left or right. You can see if there's some car flying down the road or yeah, about right before you enter that intersection. So, and I think even over here, actually, maybe a month ago, it was like two fifty in Rainbow over here, that there was a police officer that got into the car accident as well. You got to be careful for. You know, these days people listen to music and stuff like that. The windows aren't lowered and stuff like that. A police car can come through for an emergency or an ambulance. So you just need to be careful. But I think the goal is the five-second rule that I basically came up with, I think is a great idea to implement and to tell people. And hopefully today, you know, 300,000 Cox subscribers that see this is that to wait the five seconds if you're at the red light, that's one way of solving the problem of preventing getting into a car accident. Even if someone's at fault going to the red light, at least you prevent yourself from getting hurt and injured. Correct, yeah. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of your surroundings, period. What are the things, <coughs> excuse me, what are the things you think that we can do or is it notifying politicians that the laws need to be stricter? Do we, oh, I mentioned before about the insurance and I actually was thinking that, you know, when, when we do these shows, I'm always trying to be creative in general. You know, these days with QR codes, I actually feel like, you know, when you go up to a car and you ask someone for insurance, we want to make sure that people on the road that got through they get into an accident, they actually have valid insurance. Yeah. Um, I think that there should be like a QR code on the front of everyone's, it should be like a law, like a QR code in front yeah. of everyone's w window. Here right? he goes again. Yeah. And then if they scan it, you know if there's like valid insurance or not on that car. Like it needs to be more high tech. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you've heard this, but with like Russia and stuff like that with the Teslas, somehow it can even be connected. If there's not valid insurance, that that car doesn't even start. Yeah. In Russia, they were saying that Tesla yeah. was going to cut off all the cars yeah. That were Tesla cars. Did you hear that at all? There was like I a rumor did, that yeah. they could just shut off all the cars. They could, you know, turn a switch yeah. and shut them all off. But I think that something needs to be a little bit stricter. Of course, there's going to be people that are fighting. But if we really want to decrease from people getting into car accidents and not having insurance with all these hit and runs, like something more needs to be done because it just doesn't seem right these days that if I show a piece of paper that says I have insurance and really I just paid for the first month and I'm still driving, the cop thinks that you have insurance, you don't get a ticket, but meanwhile, if you hit someone, the other person's screwed. They right, get yeah. you in the fast track lane. I mean, when you're driving, you're in the whole lane, or you know, yeah, in yeah. some states, I would say, you know, they just implemented the whole whole lane here in Vegas, yeah. but in California, you'll get a ticket, you'll get that right away. I mean, they scan your license plate, everything like that, so why not do it to yeah. prevent yeah, and, and then at the, the DMV is doing other things too. There's just, you know, you get your license or your uh, driver's or your registration suspended if your insurance company reports back to the, the DMV and says there's no insurance and it's, you're, there's multiple things, fines are happening. The SR22, the, the uh, ticket, what you get from the cop and the uh, suspended registration. So they're trying, but it's not enough, obviously. So here's a question, and this is great for our viewers. I would love to hear, you know, um, again, they can go to um, theproblemsolver.vegas. They can call me as well and... Go online. I like to hear from the viewers that are out there what their thoughts are, what, what solutions that they may have, and they can always share that with me as well. But I think um, $1,000 is what the ticket normally would cost if you have no insurance. Technically, the police officer could tow the car in general yeah. 
on a public roadway. Some officers with discretion, they may not. They may say, hey, just get insurance. I, and sometimes they could look the other way. I would say the majority don't. Majority get towed, you do, think? Do not tow. The they do not. Yeah, yeah. do not. There should be more of a penalty is what. And I yeah. will share with you, when I was a police officer, I would give a ticket to somebody. I would say, look, you need to pull that car over in a private parking lot. You need to get insurance or get the car towed. Who is really doing that? Yeah. And if I drove the other way, a lot of these people are going to just risk it and then just take their car for five minutes later and they're yeah. going to drive it off. But it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Something more needs to be done with it. I think, I think it should be like an automatic tow. If you have no insurance in that car... Yeah. It should be a requirement by law yeah. to get that that car has to be towed. I, yeah, I Actually, agree. it probably should be towed to the police impound. Yeah, and <laughs> they have to show proof of insurance to get the car out. I think exactly. that's what it is. I think that would, that would solve a problem for sure. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is kind of this Let's is kind of talk like, about it. This yeah. this is one of the things I like. Kind of, it's kind of like this is my therapy here is solving problems in general. But yeah. I think that's what has to be done. Yeah. The car needs to be towed, and I felt bad. Actually, I had one person that you know their kids in the car and they had no insurance. Yeah. And like, but honestly, if there's no insurance in that car. If they get into an accident, they're hurting someone else. There's no money for injuries and so on. It's not really fair to the other people. Yeah, it's not. So I think now Nevada Highway Patrol, when you're on a highway, they're more likely to tow a car. Mm -hmm. But if it's the local agencies, I don't think they will do it. I think what happens is the car needs to be towed to a police impound. When you have proof of insurance, you get the car out. Yeah. Then I'm okay with the thousand dollar, you know, ticket. Um, but you know, technically, it probably should be more than a thousand dollars because the goal is to when somebody gets a ticket to prevent that bad behavior, right? Yeah. For them not driving it on a public roadway. I mean, do you think that a ticket should be two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars? I mean, the, with that, with the towing thing, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people losing their cars. Because some people are in, you know, financial I was situation. Say, how that's could tough. you help? If when there, that... there's people that are, in, that are in tough financial situation, they can't pay their insurance. Something's going on, but then they're risking it to, to drive on the roads with no insurance, and you get your car impounded. They can't get the car out, and they're pretty much screwed. I mean, they're just they're going to self a deeper and deeper hole. But in I'm the not so long run. It it could help. Yeah. I'm not so like pro tow because yeah. you know, tow normally costs about three hundred bucks, and then every yeah. day they're charging money. Some people, some people, the car basically costs, you know, not that much. So it doesn't even pay to get the car out. Yeah. Because if the car only costs a thousand, two thousand dollars, but you see how many people get injured, severely injured, yeah. and they don't have insurance, and then yeah. you you can't even do anything as an attorney, which is sad. Yeah. And I actually think a personal injury attorney is one of the noblest attorneys because you're basically taking a case, you're not charging any money up front. Yeah. You only basically make money when the, the, the person makes settled. money when you win the yeah, case. Yeah. Where other attorneys, right, they're charging per hour and so on. Yeah. I just feel so bad as a retired cop. And I'm sure as you as a attorney, when you meet with someone that you really just can't help them. Yeah. You know? It's unfortunate, yeah. So long story short, as we wrap up, I think we came up with some good solutions in general. I actually, I want to take this video, send it to some of the politicians. I think that some the laws need to be improved in regards to maybe a higher fine. I think the biggest thing, honestly, no matter what, is towing the car. I mean, it's the only yeah. way of, of making sure that if they get caught on the roadway, a public roadway, to get your car imagine back. telling yeah. everybody, right, hey, we're going to tow your car. And you're not going to be able to get it with, you know, without insurance. I think that would prevent people from driving that car on the roadway because they may lose their car. Even if they're financing, they're going to have to still make that payment. And they're still liable yeah. for that in general. So, But anyway, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, sharing that. I know yes. that you're available. What's your phone number? If, if anyone wants to reach out to you, they get into an accident and they're injured, what is your number? Yeah, absolutely. It's 702-602-HURT. It's uh, 602 4878 what uh, HURT spells there. And where's your office located? Over on uh, Rainbow 215. And if someone's injured and needs some help, you go to them as well? Or how's yeah, it work? absolutely. I mean, if somebody's injured, you give us a call, we'll, we'll get you taken care of, and, and we'll come to you if it's necessary, yeah. Okay, great. Well, Thank you. Well, I appreciate the time and your yeah. insight. It's always great for people to hear this information. They don't have the knowledge. Um, hope to have you back on the show as well. Yeah, and thanks. again, thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Again, I'm David Colmeyer, the problem solver. Looking forward to helping people next week. Be safe. Be careful. Use the five second rule. Make sure you stop. Count five seconds, and let's prevent some accidents from happening in Las Vegas. Have a good week. Thanks.